So who do we have here? Hi, my name is Jason Coppage. I have been a tech entrepreneur for 18 years. I founded and operated a portal directory in the education abroad field for 14 years. I uh, exited that company successfully in 2012, and I use that experience to build a directory in medical tourism called MedTrip.com. Okay, Richard? Hi, my name is Richard Quaid. I'm the CEO of MedTrip. I am a 28-year veteran of the startup world. I have two exits as a founder, three exits as an executive, and I have been instrumental in helping companies go from the brink of disaster to successful ex exits in less than two years. What's your one-sentence description of MedTrip? A education portal and a directory of hospital, global hospitals and clinics with tools for the prospective patients um, to compare and make the right choice. Okay. Richard? I think it's the greatest opportunity I've seen for long-term, large estimate success. Tell me a little bit more about like how MedTrip got started. So the, the idea of MedTrip came when I was living in Southeast Asia for 10 years and I was traveling uh, Asia to Europe often and when I would get sick, uh, I would, you don't go to doctor's offices, you go to straight to hospitals. And um, the, the hospitals themselves were beautiful. The doctors were American educated, spoke perfect English, and the prices were ridiculously low from what I was, what I was accustomed to in the US. And um, everybody that I had talked to who had traveled and, and needed health care in other countries was always very impressed with it and um, uh, became evangel evangelist for um, getting treatment abroad. And when, when I was traveling to Europe and I needed to find a hospital, it was very difficult to decide um, to find what the right clinic was to go to. So it was a shot in the dark. I had to go to three or four different clinics until I found the right one um, who could even help me. And uh, I thought, why isn't there anything on the internet to help you make the right decision? What are some of the pain points MedTrip solves for transparency in medical tourism? Sure. It's interesting that we focus, when we talk about MedTrip, we focus about how to connect patients with facilities. But for MedTrip, the focus actually is on helping facilities and local tourism to do their outreach for uh, the patients who are seeking information, just like Jason was. And so a lot of the, the traditional business models for bringing patients to facilities is broken. It no longer suits the direction of the market, the age of the population that is moving into the medical tourism field. And so what MedTrip does is we help facilities become more sophisticated in how they do their outreach. We also help local tourism boards do the same thing. We're talking about a $1 trillion industry for non-medical expenses related to the tourism aspect. So think about families who have to travel. They need a place to stay, they need local transportation, they need meals, and they also need entertainment while they're uh, in those locations. Imagine uh, children um, who are going to travel uh, and they need something to do. And uh, the other thing that, um, to focus on the patients, as Jason said, it's very difficult for them to find the facilities and the doctors that are going to be best for them. Now, best for them is difficult. Uh, best for them is identifying the right location, identifying the right doctors, and also being able to provide, to capture aftercare so that the doctors abroad still need to communicate with the patients after they return home, and those doctors need to communicate with those home doctors as well. And so those are some of the pain points that MedTrip helps resolve. So how big is the platform? How many um, entities do you have in it? So. 
Currently, we have over 5,000 different clinics and hospitals that are a part of the directory. Um, we also have a team of full, four full-time people who are um, identifying the right partners, doing outreach to those clinics, and getting their information added to the database. So it's growing every day. Richard, can you describe the go-to-market strategy? Of course. The go-to-market strategy is very logical and it is based on identifying three primary regions that are most popular in the world for destination facilities. Then we're going to identify three countries that overlap those three regions where what we call feeder locations. And so by putting those two together we can identify the most popular procedures for those audiences going to those destinations. We're going to begin immediately doing outreach to those audiences from the feeder nations focused on those procedures. Hopefully we'll develop a large database or traction from those regions and then we can go to the facilities in those three target regions for us. At that point we will start to market to them and we'll start to offer not just the outreach and helping them to attract um, the potential patients but also helping them to improve their own marketing, uh, possibly web development, growth marketing, content creation, and um, doing translation services for them. Okay. Um, what are those regions? Those three you're thinking of? The three regions of to destination regions will likely be Turkey, uh, Bangkok, Thailand, and probably Singapore. Okay. Possibly Costa Rica, but that's only if we want to target and expand outside of the Asian market. And where would you take a trip if you could? Anywhere. Anywhere for medical. For purposes. medical reasons, I would I would go to Bangkok, Thailand. And where would you go on a trip if you could? I would go to um, Brazil. Brazil. What are you looking to get out of Techstars? Oh, being in uh, ensconced in one of the most dynamic environments I found for uh, startups for founders, uh, surrounded by people who are intense focused, interested, and can contribute, and hopefully to whom I can contribute. Hopefully by the year 2019, we'll be able to identify uh, three target exit acquirers. Um, the target price is $75 million, which requires only a $15 million top line revenue in that year. That's based on a 5x uh, multiplier for top line. And the key targets right now are actually um, in the tourism space, so we could actually see something like Expedia or possibly within the major hotel chains. We can find something within the insurance space because the cost savings is so significant. And then there's a whole host of um, medical-related uh, and travel-related entities that would find this absolutely appealing. The other component is that we're going to build what is seemingly the most robust comprehensive database of tourism travel or medical tourism that's out there. Most of what's out there now are estimates. We're actually going to have very specific clean data on travel patterns, lodging patterns, and the rest. What are some things you need right now to get pointed in the right direction? Um, you know, it's interesting. This is the first time in my career where I actually have questions or I'm faced with questions to which I don't have um, immediate answers. And so I think one of the best things that we'll get out of Techstars and one of our greatest needs is to be surrounded by people who have experience in um, building a sales force overseas is a good one. Um, do we hire locals? Do we hire a national sales manager? Do we hire content writers, for example? Um, do we hire crews uh, in the locations to go out and film these facilities to help them promote themselves? So there's a lot of issues that I think we can get help with um, from Techstars. And our biggest need as a business, though, is simply to um, increase our spend on sales and marketing. We anticipate having 60% of all the money that we raise going to uh, sales and marketing efforts. Okay. Who is healthier in a battle between you two? Healthier? No. <laughs> <laughs> His family is all sick, so I think it's me. <laughs> but that's just, you Depends know, on the it's market. him for today. Yeah. <laughs> You're working out the, um, uh, yeah. 